My name is Ron Bonica. I'm a distinguished engineer at Juniper Networks. Today, Juniper has a full-featured implementation of SRMPLS. It's out there, it's deployed, it's ready to go. In the very near future, we will have implementations of SRV6 and SRV6+. But the most interesting part of our product offering today is the controller. In a previous video, we talked about CSPF computations and situations in which the CSPF computation needed to be done by a centralized controller. But there are reasons you might want to deploy a controller beyond CSPF computations. A controller can be used for a few purposes. First, it can be used for configuration management. You can use it to maintain an offline model of your network and to push your configurations from the controller to the network elements. It can also be used to collect telemetry, to collect information from network elements regarding things like link utilization, queue depth, processor saturation. It can give you a good picture of how your network is doing. It can also create visualizations of the network. It can show you a real-time picture of what your network looks like, where the hotspots are, where the underutilized spots are. But the most interesting part of our product offering today is the controller. So we've talked about reasons for deploying a controller beyond CSPF calculation. But let's talk a little bit about CSPF calculation. First and foremost, the controller is the only element of the network that has a global view of everything that's going on in the network. Every path, every network element, every link, every queue, every processor. So there are times when it can make better CSPF calculations than any distributed node could possibly make. Beyond that, in segment routing, there are situations in which only the controller can make a CSPF calculation. And the one that stands out is a situation in which the CSPF calculation involves a bandwidth reservation. Remember, in segment routing, transit nodes don't maintain per path information. A transit node does not know which paths traverse it. If it doesn't know what paths traverse it, it certainly doesn't know how much bandwidth is reserved by each path. Only the controller knows that. So in segment routing, if a path computation involves bandwidth reservation, path computation must be executed by a central controller, and the central controller has to distribute path information to the ingress nodes, so the ingress nodes will know what paths a packet must traverse on the route to its egress. So we've talked about a few controller functions, maintaining an offline model of the network, pushing configurations, collecting telemetry, doing path computation. These functions can be more or less mission critical. Some of them aren't mission critical at all. For instance, maintaining an offline model of the network is not a mission critical function. Pushing configurations is slightly more mission critical, but not very critical. Collecting telemetry is more critical. Performing path computation can be very mission critical. And for that reason, we need to address the problems of availability and scalability for the controller. In order to address the problem of availability, the controller can be distributed into multiple data centers with one master instance and some backup instances. If something happens so the master becomes isolated from the network or some catastrophic event so the, the master isn't working at all, a backup controller can take over for it. More work is being done to address scalability so that the controller can keep up with any demand that's offered to it, regardless of what that demand may be. Thank you for watching, and for more information, check out our website at juniper.net forward slash sr.